the, the roid rage on the Red Sea, I think it is, over in Jeddah. Last time it was in <laughs> Diria, which was more centralised Saudi Arabia. There might be a nice breeze on the sea here uh, over in Saudi Arabia, over in Jeddah this time. Hopefully for the two boys, Alexander Usyk, who has all three belts, and Anthony Joshua looking to claim revenge. Justin, we'll go to you first of all on this one. I said it to the boys on Sunday evening. You can't write off a puncher like AJ. We know he can finish people. He's a big, strong unit, but I struggle, Justin, to see what he can do differently here. I think it's Usyk's fight to lose, and I just don't really see what AJ can do any differently, even with Robert Garcia in his corner, than the first fight. Prove me wrong, Justin. Prove me wrong. I can't prove you wrong. There's there's, there's no way to prove you wrong. Let, but like you said, he has power, so he can. I mean, you never know. Usyk, I mean, he could stop him. I, would, I, know, I don't think anybody could say they would be surprised if he knocked him out. But I just don't see it happen. And Usyk's just better in every single thing. Like I said, I think Usyk's going to – Usyk could, should have knocked him out in the first fight. But he just – you know, he didn't really go that extra gear. But I think if he actually puts in that extra gear, he'll knock him out probably earlier than – probably six or earlier. I totally Bridget. agree. But if I was to play devil's advocate, advocate just a little bit, I would kind of say – and if I was an AJ fan, maybe I'd be thinking this way. But um, – he fought like AJ fought so um, nervously, so tentatively. Like didn't impose himself in the first fight at all. I just wonder maybe when he doesn't have the belts, when he's a challenger, whether he, and with the change of trainer, whether he'll be a little bit different approach in the fight, whether he'll be more aggressive, maybe he'll be more assertive. Would he try Wait, to hurt Usyk early? You know, I think that needs to happen. I think he definitely needs to grab Usyk's attention by hurting him early. Well, that's what uh, Robert. That's I mean, Robert Garcia's thing, though. I mean, that's what he teaches is yeah. to go ahead and push it. So I, I, I believe he's going to come out and try to push. It. He, he can't do the same stupid box and like try to, you know, do. He can't do that crap. He has wow. to come at him and come at him hard. And you never know, Usyk. I mean, Usyk has had guys come at him hard, like he'll never see it before. But Joshua, his only, like you said, I agree, hundred percent. If he comes at it and really puts it on him early, he might be able to get enough respect. To work something out, but Usyk's just a good cow. I mean, Usyk has all the tools. I think Usyk is going to be prepared for all of that. So you're right. Joshua's only hope is like I think you said it is to come out hard and hope that he could catch him in the first round or two with something, and then Usyk might get tentative, and that's his best shot. You're right. That's his best shot. He's gotta he's gotta get the respect big time early because he nailed Usyk with a few good shots, and Usyk didn't really do anything. So maybe I don't know. He has to he has to hurt him early. You're right. Has to. Yeah. If he lets Usyk get into his uh, rhythm and his, let Usyk go through his gears, it's going to be the same, the same issue, you know, with Usyk showing on the the left hand, and you know the amount of times he landed that shot at will, whichever way he wanted it. He had he so many different ways of setting it up, and AJ just had no answer. I think if it, if he gets to that stage where Usyk has the initiative in that kind of sense, where he's the one setting traps, where he's the one, you know, making AJ do whatever he wants to do, then it's going to be the same result probably. Actually, a different result with, with AJ on the floor and, and knocked out. But I think if AJ tries to be, that's what I would do. If, you know, like you said, Justin, you know, try to be be assertive, hurt him early, get his respect, get him thinking twice about you know making this angler, giving him that look because you know you've, you've earned his respect and hurt him already. But I don't know if I don't know if AJ has it. To be honest, I, I don't. I mean, Robert Garcia. That's not enough time with Robert Garcia. You can't. I mean, and Robert Garcia is probably not even going to be like. The main guy talking to him. So I think that that's just smoke and mirrors. I don't think Garcia is going to have that much input anyway. I really don't. I don't. I think they're just using his name. I don't think he's going to be like having these big time train. I don't think he's going to have that much input. I mean, like Joshua's still on holiday, is he? He's not even back. So, or he's doing this. I don't. I don't think Garcia is going to change anything. I don't. I think they've been saying that they. Were, he, I think Garcia said um, when he was doing interviews after the press conference last week that uh, he'd been working with him since December. Um, and maybe they're just saying that to kind of put a better light on the decision and make it seem like it's been a bit more planned out than it seemed mm. to us. But um, if he has had time since December, maybe he will be able to have enough time to have a, a material impact. But I don't know. It's tough to say from, from the outside. I don't know why Garcia gets the time. He's got like 75 guys he's training right now anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't, really, because think about it. Like When he does these cars on the zone, like eight of the guys on there are his guys. Yeah. So I, I don't know where he gets the time to do all this. I don't. 
No, I agree. I think Garcia can make some kind of improvements or changes by giving him bits of advice, Justin. But at the end of the day, you're dealing with the same fighter here. Joshua has been around a while. He knows what he can and cannot do. Joe mentioned the straight left hand there. In the first 30 seconds of the first fight, Usyk was just bang, that left hand straight away, right in his face. Those memories will come back if he does that again in the second fight. I think, and even if Joshua does come in heavier, stronger, more aggressive, catches Usyk, uh, he'll drain later on in the fight. It makes him more vulnerable, more susceptible. And if Usyk can get back into his rhythm, the, after sixth round, seventh round, eighth round, jo Joshua's going to start powering down. I, I really do struggle to see how he's going to win this fight. And the bad thing is, who cares if he gets knocked out? He just made a hundred million dollars. I mean, that's it's like, well, I get knocked out, but shoot, I'll go fight on pay per view and I'll still make a hundred million dollars. So it's like that's hard to like. Usyk knows if he gets knocked out, the money's. He could be screwed. He's going to have to really – nobody's going to fight him, and it's going to be harder on him. But So he has a little bit more. I think that's. I think those things factor in too because you have more fire. Joshua, where is the fire coming from? I mean, what, really. I mean, he has everything. I, I like to see – I mean, it's just the money now. And like I said, I, I always factor that in when I look at fights too is like which guy needs it more and which guy's going to want it more. And I think Usyk's definitely going to want it and need it more. Yeah. Uh, Joe, Justin's making some good points there. If, if uh, Yusik loses, he's a road warrior. He's always he's going to go back into obscurity. That's where he's been his whole career. The fact that he's got fights, paydays, and got into the position he is now is because he's gone on the road into people's backyards. And every time, he hasn't even had 20 fights yet. He's unified, undisputed cruiserweight champion, and he has three of the belts at heavyweight. If he loses to Joshua, well, I suppose they could try and make the third fight, but he's going to be on skid row. But, I mean, the thing is with Joshua as well, this is a rematch in Saudi. Andy Ruiz, different fighter from Usyk. He got the rematch in Saudi. Maybe a little less pressure on Joshua, Joe, for two factors. We know what he is now. If he gets knocked out, we're not going to be surprised. And at least he's not at home as well in front of that baying kind of crowd. It's like off in the distance out in Saudi at 9 o'clock on a, a Saturday evening and there won't be as many people watching, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think definitely that, that feeds into it. And I think... Um... You know, it, we saw that a little bit with Joshua in the second Ruiz fight, the the, the 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 pressure off him. And he he doesn't look like a guy who handles the pressure that well. Well, I I say that, but I think he handles the big-time stadium spectacular fireworks pressure well. But I think when, when Usyk's, you know, got that educated front foot pressure, you know, that kind of pressure with the left hand, showing him left hand and bringing the, the jab in with the hook and, you know, basically keeping them guessing. I think that kind of pressure, he doesn't deal with too well. So I think when they're in the ring, um, mano a mano, I still think that Usyk's going to be the daddy and that the pressure will still come and that Joshua, you know, even though he's in Jeddah or, or, or Riyadh or wherever he is, you know, it's it's still going to be a, a pressure cooker situation for him and not in a good way. I, I just... You know, I know I played devil's advocate a few minutes ago about Josh's chance, but on a personal level, I, I really don't see it going any other way other than an Eusek KO for me. But for those reasons, I think, yeah, definitely he probably should be less pressured. And, you know, the fact he's a challenger, less pressure there. But Usyk doesn't strike me as a guy who lets the, the weight of the crown way too heavily on him either. You know, I think he's got a lot of other stuff going on that's probably more important than boxing, even for the heavyweight champion of the world right now. So, um no, I, I think that when it comes down to it, it's going to be the better boxer who's going to win this rematch. Mm. Uh, yeah, I think Usyk definitely needs to hurt him. I was watching the first fight back, as I mentioned, and um, Joshua did have success in the middle rounds. He landed a few decent shots. He cut Usyk. He definitely he didn't bust up his face, but he caused some facial damage. We know he's a big guy. And I said around round six, seven, he kind of push things close. What about the, the judges, Justin? Do you think they could have any bearing on this? I'm still quite uh, scratching my head as to how Howard Foster narrowed it up to 115-113 in the first fight. If you can find Joshua winning five rounds, then um, goodness knows what's going to happen in the rematch. Any concern over the judges, Justin, at all? A little bit. I mean, because you know who they want to win, and that always has to I mean, no matter how many fights you've watched over the years, it always kind of leans that way. You know who they want to win, and usually they do. I mean, so, mm. yeah, it, it has to factor a little bit because that – I mean, because if Joshua does win the zone, they just got their $100 million back, period. I mean, they got it back. The, the investment they made is done if he wins because that will set up – because you know Fury is going to come running right in to take it. They're going to have all this set up. They, they win. I mean, they have made their investment. So 
And if they lose, it's going to take them a whole lot longer to get it back. So, yes, they're – I mean, I'm not – you know, people have been saying that for years. Is there corruption? Yes. And I don't think the judges are going to be paid or nothing like this. But I'm saying if it's close, Usyk better watch out. And one thing I hadn't – I'd obviously remembered it at the time, but I'm a great one for going back and, and seeing things. And I noticed that in the last 10 seconds of the, fir- of the first fight, Usyk had Joshua, Joe – pretty hurt badly hurt actually people were saying the bell was rung a bit early i'm not sure whether it was or not but there was video cam from the esteemed twitter uh, correspondent art man showing someone in joshua's corner i don't know whether he was waving the towel to, for joshua to come in or whether he was waving the towel to try and get the fight off but it looked to me as if they were close to stopping that fight and joshua was close to getting stopped now you, i did read somewhere joe you six saying that he didn't stop him because it wasn't part of the strategy. I never really believe people when they say, oh, I didn't get someone out of there because people are saying, oh, there might be the chance of a rematch. I don't think that's ever the case. But in this case, I think the fact that you get to rounds 9, 10, 11, and you 6 team are telling him, just don't put your foot on the gas too much. Just stick to the plan, stick to the strategy, and don't look to get him out of there. It was almost like he was holding back a little bit. But if he'd have really gone for it, I think in that last round, uh, earlier than he did, I think Usyk definitely could have stopped him because Joshua was close to getting stopped during that 12th round. Yeah, he was He was, He was. was all over the place. If I remember correctly, he was um, He was kind of smiling a little bit, lying against the ropes as as he used to kind of teed off on him and, and uh, yeah, it looked really, really bad shape. And yeah, I agree. If that was, even if that was, you know, maybe the eighth or ninth round, it's still, you know, quite a bit of the fight left. Maybe Usyk would have, would have pushed on the gas and taken the guy out of there. But I don't think there was much, much value to Usyk doing that in the 12th round. So I don't, I, I think he kind of let him off the hook a little bit, but um, you know, I think if he gets a chance to take him out, he'll take him out though. Um, and I think he probably will get a chance this this time around if if Joshua comes out with that more aggressive approach that we think he is. It's going to lead lend itself to that kind of fight. I think. Um, well, you know, who knows? Bellew, of course, you know who, who boxed and who obviously knows about boxing much better than us. He says mm-hmm. that he doesn't really have that KO power, so maybe he used to can't get AJ out of there. I don't know. No, but in, in all seriousness, I think he. I think I think he will. Like I think Usyk has shown. That he can hurt Joshua, even early, like you said early in that fight, you know he. I think it was the first or second round, one of those left hands. He he had Joshua backing up and and, and, and kind of with his legs stiffened. You know uh, you can't do that without without proper power. You know. Okay. In relation to AJ against Usyk, whoever wins will have three of the belts. Tyson Fury has the other one. We're assuming, we're hoping the winners are going to fight. If it's Usyk, you would imagine the fight with Fury would be easier to make, given Eddie's not involved. Given Usyk has no problem. Um, making fights and going on the road. So uh, just as Ryan Deal jumps on the call with us there, Justin, I was just going to ask you a quick question about the wider heavyweight picture. You mentioned Luis Ortiz earlier of ring collapsing fame. He's going in against former Anthony Joshua conqueror and victim Andy Ruiz Jr. on Sunday, the 4th of September in the Crypto.com arena, no less. Could be a fun fight. Two decent punchers, two well-known heavyweights. Ruiz against Ortiz. You'd expect Ruiz would win that fight. How do you see it going, Justin, and where does the winner fit into the, the heavyweight picture? No, you're right. It's going to be fun. I mean, because Ortiz, he all, I mean, even when he gets knocked out, he always brings it. And he, how old he is, that doesn't really matter. He always brings it. I guess every fight with Ruiz, the first thing you got to say is, is he in shape? Because if he's not in shape, then Ortiz is going to beat him, period. If, if he comes in and he's like, you know, he's just, well, I don't think he's ever going to be as bad as he was in the rematch, but – because he, I mean, he got he has a new trainer, and I don't really know what's going on, of how he's looking, and whatever. But if he's in good shape, or well, good shape for him, that he'll win. I mean, I don't, th- I don't know if he'll knock Ortiz out, but he'll win. And if he does win, then I don't think there's a title shot right away for him. I don't think Usyk or Joshua is going to be looking to fight him. Fury's not going to look to fight him. So I think Ruiz is probably going to be on the back burner until one of them like drops belts or something because he's not a he's not a guy that Fury's going to mess with. Uh, Usyk, Usyk would be the only guy that would fight him, and that's only if a couple of fights you know break down and he has to. But Joshua has no reason to fight him again, so it'll. It I guess if you're Team Ruiz, you would want Usyk to win because that's your best shot of maybe getting a, a chance, but. I don't see a chance coming any soon, even if he does win. 
at least Justin, it pushes him back into relevance. I've mentioned this yeah. before on the pod. If there's ever a fighter that has failed to capitalise on being the heavyweight, multi-belt heavyweight champion of the world, came in in negligent shape and has just gone completely off the radar for, what, two, three years since, having hardly any fights, he has just failed to capitalise. At least this makes him relevant again and pushes uh, him back uh, into the into the mix. Well, Ariola almost knocked him out. So, I mean, if Ortiz can land clean, I think Ortiz could knock him out. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be – I think that's what makes it interesting because you could see where both guys can easily win, and I think I think that's what makes it 50-50 because if Ortiz is landing those clean shots like Areola did, I think Ortiz will put him away. So, yeah, it is it is kind of 50-50. I might lean toward it. – it's one of those deals you got to see what the weigh-in looks like before I'd make a decision. Yeah, I think uh, Ruiz, if he's defensively responsible and he manages to move around the wing, with the ring, and he's not too heavy, he should be able to hit box or tease. He's getting on a bit in years. The stamina down the stretch isn't the greatest, but he's always a puncher. If Ruiz comes in looking like a big fat slob, which he might do, then you never know. Ortiz could get rid of him. Talking of big fat slobs, Ryan Deal from New Zealand is in great shape these days. He's jumped on the call with us as well. We're talking heavyweights. AJ against Usyk, Ryan. Me, Joe and Justin, we're struggling to give AJ any chance, any hope in this August the 20th rematch. Can you think of any hope for AJ? That one big punch possibly? Catch you sick napping? Is there, is there anything we can do? Any breadcrumbs of hope for this guy? Um, it's not completely out of the realms that he knocks Usyk out. Um, I was kind of thinking like his right hand that he was throwing against Charles Martin. That should be his money money punch in this fight because he ain't out boxing and he ain't going to step to you sick. He's just got to plant his feet and throw with him, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of of the opinion that Usyk's just going to do the start the same way and just it'd be like round 13 almost and he'll just it'll be on the front foot from the start and I don't know. Let's see what Joshua's got mentally really because I don't think it's the trainer and all that sort of stuff is going to do much for him. So he's just got to go there and do it. It's, it's not last chance saloon because he'll always have fights in the UK. But if he wants to be a world champion again, this is I think this is his last chance. Yeah, I think the mental side could uh, leak into the physical side as well, Ryan, because we know his stamina is not the greatest. He can do 12 rounds okay. I mean, he, you know, he, he doesn't completely gas out, but he does tend down the stretch to tire. I think Usyk's going to come out. He's going to feel him out for the first two, three, four rounds. Then he's going to put his foot on the gas a lot quicker. But I think if things start going against AJ, say if he gets a cut or he gets knocked down or he starts to feel his gas tank wilting, Ryan, I think I agree with you. I think that mental fragility is going to start to show itself. And dare I say, he has a bit of quit in him. I said ninth round because I think Usyk will be conservative early on. Ozzy Smith's thinking sixth, seventh round. He thinks it's going to be a lot earlier than that. But it's a mental and a physical battle. Uh, for AJ Ryan, because I think if Usyk starts landing them big shots early on, he's going to wilt and he's going to start to maybe even want to look out of there. Um, I don't know if he's got a quit in him because I think the quit. Well, you say it's a quit. You don't you don't quit at that level. I don't think. I think it gets beaten out of you. And then the the Ruiz fight, he was just he was hurt from as soon as he was hit, and he managed to get through another. Was it four or five rounds of? basically just being ready to go and he even came back a little bit and won the odd round so I don't know if there's a, a complete quit in him uh, he's one of them music will he must he must have felt like he was going to get him out of there in that last round in the last fight and he'll as soon as he gets that feeling again I think he's just got to step on it because yeah he was close enough on the cards and you don't want to leave anything to chance, really. I think he's just got to get, get the job done here. Yeah, Ryan's right there, everybody, for checking me on that one. I think quit is actually the wrong terminology. He's shown toughness in the past, even against the likes of Klitschko and, and in tough situations against Povetkin as well, and even against Dillian White when he gets hurt. Maybe not quit, but I think mentally wilt and maybe look to to hide in the shadows a little bit for a few rounds, something like that. Yeah, quit is too strong a terminology, so Ryan's absolutely right there. He's, he's a tough guy, AJ, and He's getting paid a lot of money. Um, one guy, uh, Joe, who we would have loved to have seen AJ fight at his prime is Deontay Wilder, who had those three fantastic fights with Tyson Fury. Still no word on Wilder coming back yet. Obviously, that third fight with Fury would have taken a lot out of him. I still think he's um, he has the confidence, the belief. 
yeah, the big enough punch to think that he can do something at this level. And if we were to see Joshua against Wilder or Joshua against Usyk or anybody other than Fury in the future, I wouldn't be averse to that. But uh, when when do you think Wilder's going to come back, Joe? And who would be an ideal opponent for him when he does? No, he's it's not close. But I actually did go to Birmingham and watch him fight uh, Gerald Washington. Uh, was it? I go to when that was like four or five years ago. So, uh, I mean, yeah, I like Deontay Wilder. I don't like the stuff, you know, in the ring, I like Deontay Wilder. I don't like all the other crap that goes with him, but in the ring, I like him. I mean, I think I've always, I mean, I know people give him a hard time, but I don't care. I like watching guys get knocked out. I don't care what level they are. I, I mean, I like watching him knock guys out, and I'm not one of these guys that's going to, like, criticize him. Well, you know, he doesn't have the good form, or he doesn't have this. Who cares? Look how far he's gotten. Look how much money he's made, and look how many dudes he's just completely crippled. That's all I care about. I mean, I've never been a guy who take away from him. And if he wants to come back, he can still win a lot. Of, he can still beat a lot of these guys, and he can still win the title back. But you just don't know if how much he won't. I mean, you know how much he's got left because he took he took beatings in the Fury fights. The last two, I mean, he took a lot. I mean, beatings. Mm. And I don't know how much you know. He really doesn't have to. He, you know, he's singing now with his brother, so he's like making money on the side now. So he's got like an album coming out. You know, he's got stuff going on, I guess. So he doesn't really have to. But like, if he come out now, he could knock you out. He knocks anybody out. But he, I see him knocking out Ruiz. He would, uh, if jo- if he lands one shot on Joshua, he'd knock him out. I mean, so he could come back easily and be successful, but. I don't know. I'm 50-50. I, I kind of lean towards – actually, probably 60-40. I think he might come back, but I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if we'd ever see him again. 